Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here for VideoCopilot.net, and welcome to another fun-filled After Effects tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at some expressions and driving events. In this case, we're going to make something happen based on the speed of a layer. So when the layer reaches a certain speed, things are going to happen. So say you jump on the back of a car while it's going 20 miles per hour, you're going to be able to hold on, but once it reaches about 70, 80 miles per hour, you're going to fall off. So that's the event. When it reaches 80 miles per hour, you fall off. So with that in mind, here's what we're going to be creating. Okay, so the great thing about this example is you probably won't get hurt, so that's good. So what we have here is a video copilot text layer. And what it's doing is it's moving around and it's rotating. And when it reaches a certain speed, particles are then emitted. And these particles are emitted in the direction that the layer is moving. So it's a very unique effect that you couldn't necessarily get if you were keyframing, or at least it would take you a lot of time. This way, we move the layer around and the particles then emit based on the speed of that text layer. We also have this layer here, which is a speed checker. And it's a simple expression that's set up. And if you look here, that is the speed of our text layer. So if I scrub through here, it's not moving. And then it picks up some speed. And then it stops again. And then it picks up some speed again. So anyway. Just remember, don't be afraid of expressions. Once you understand them, you're going to wonder how you ever did without them. The truth is, you may not be good at anything in life. Your friends may not like you. Your coworkers are probably talking behind your back. And there's nothing you or I can do about that. That's just life. But this mic is my witness. You will understand expressions if it kills me. Which unfortunately will just make you less cool. Like people that work inside of a Starbucks. Or worse, people watching this tutorial inside of a Starbucks. Very sad. Anyway, that's not really my business. Uh, let's go and get started. Edit, Preferences, User Interface Color. We'll go ahead and set that to default. Choose OK. Go ahead and make a new composition. Do D1 Square Pixel and choose OK. Go ahead and make a new solid and uh, we'll make it green. OK. It's going to be our background. And we'll choose Edit, Generate, Ramp. We'll do Radial. Set this to green and this to black. Now let's go and create our text. So we'll just click in here, Video Copilot. Set this to uh, bold. And we'll move it here in the center. Scale it up just a bit. And I'm going to close out these, and I'm going to pre-compose our text. Now you don't have to do this, but I'm going to go ahead and do it. Pre-compose text. And then we're going to create a new solid, and we'll call this Particular. Make it blue. Okay. Now I'll choose Effect, Trap Code, Particular. And this is a cool particle generator. Now you can probably use Particle World, but we're going to use this because uh, it just looks better. And uh, what we're going to do is go into the emitter, and we want to set it up as a box. We want to turn the velocity down to zero. And we're going to make the box about the size of our text. So we'll go to the emitter size. We'll just uh, move this around so it's about the right size good. We could also make our text a 3D layer. Now back to particular. Now we want to link the emitter to our text. So let's hit P, bring up the position for the text. We'll go to particular, alt click on position, make some room here. And with this all selected, grab the pick whip, come down to the position of the text and link it. That way those parameters will stay the same. And if we move our text around, the particles will move with it. Now we can also link up the Z position, although it shouldn't matter for this example. And we'll grab the pick whip, and we'll drag it down. And instead of clicking on the position, we can actually just go directly to the parameter. 
So I actually got a few emails from people telling me that we could do that. So I appreciate that. Although in the future, I appreciate if you don't post on the website and, uh, you know, call me out and make me look like a fool. So thanks for the personal email. That really helps a lot. So now we have our particle layer just about the same size of our video copilot and uh, things are looking good. So what we want to do is turn the particles per second to zero. And then we're going to take our text layer here and we're going to move the position of it around. So I'm going to keyframe the position and we're going to move forward a couple of frames and we're just going to drag it over here. So just a quick swift movement. Now this is going at a certain speed. What that speed is I don't quite know but we're going to go ahead and calculate that speed. So I'm going to create a new solid and we'll make it red and this layer is not going to do anything. We just want to check the speed so I can show you visually what it's doing. So effect expression control slider control. This will be our placeholder for the speed. And we're going to alt click on the stopwatch and we're going to type nothing. We're going to drag this over to the position and that's going to grab that value. Now the position has three values X, Y, Z and the slider only has one value. Well that's okay we just need to make sure to delete this last little part because After Effects is assuming we want to do that. And we're going to type dot speed that's it. So take the parameter, add dot speed, and guess what? We now have the speed being calculated. It's going zero, and now it's going 233.75 pixels per second. Now, I can add easy ease keyframes, F9, and so that changes the speed progressively. So it starts out slow, see, only 50, 100, up, and then back down as it slows to a stop. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, control click to switch back to normal keyframes. And if you bring them closer together, of course, the speed is going to go up. So simple way to calculate speed. So now how can we actually use that to be, you know, something useful? Well, let's go to our particular. And what we have here is our particles per second. So what if we link that to the speed of our text layer? To do that, we're going to alt click on the particles per second and we're going to pick whip to the speed. Now we can pick whip to the speed here but actually we're going to pick whip to the position and write in that same expression dot speed. So right now it's going to emit particles based on the speed of that layer. So right now it's emitting 390 particles per second and then it stops. But the difference here is we want the particles to emit only when it reaches a certain speed, say like 500. And right now it's only 400. So it doesn't look right to have particles emitting when it's just moving very slowly. So instead, we want them to be moving faster. And we want After Effects to only make it emit particles when it reaches that speed. So we need to create an if-else conditional statement. It's very easy to do once you understand. So we'll go into this particles per second. We have our uh, expression here. Let's delete that. We'll start over here. And here's what we're going to write. S. S is our variable. S equals the speed. So let's pick whip the position again. The speed of that text layer. So we'll do position dot speed semicolon. That's a variable. So we're going to use that variable in our next little equation. And we're going to type if. If. And we put this inside of uh, parentheses. S is larger than. So that's uh, larger than. That's smaller than. Is larger than 500. And then we need to do this bracket. Which if you hold down shift and click on the begin bracket. It will create that bracket. If the speed is greater than 500, emit, you know, 500 particles. Now, if it's not, type close that bracket, else open a new bracket, zero. And we put the uh, semicolon after that, and then we close it with the little squiggly bracket. I'm sure there's a name for it, but who cares? You know, some code guys like, oh, it's a, you know, well, get a life, right? Um, okay, so there's our expression. Let's hope it works, and it seems to have taken. So let's go ahead, close this down for just a moment, 
and let's take a look. Well, our speed is only going up to 389, so it's not going to emit any particles. We need to make it faster so that it starts emitting particles. So let's move it. See that? When it gets this far away, the speed is now 598, and we are now emitting beautiful particles. So that is, in a nutshell, what we're going to be doing. Now, we do need to uh, make this look a little better. So let's go and do that now. Let's go back into Particular. So we're going to open it up here. Here's our cool nifty expression. And you can use this for all sorts of things. The way we're going to set it up is we're going to do 400. We want the particles to emit if it's greater than 400 speed. And instead of emitting 500 particles exactly, we're going to type 29 times s. So what that says is 29 times the speed. So if the speed is, say, 501, that'll be 501 times 29. Now, if it goes past 501, so like if the speed is 1,000, then it'll be 1,000 times 29. And that way, we progressively make more particles if the speed is higher. So that's uh, just what we're going to be doing. Click away. See, a lot of particles there. Um, close this down. Close this down. Now, the other thing we want to do is add an expression to the text because we don't want to move it around like that. Instead, we're going to add a wiggle. So I'll get rid of the keyframe, alt click on the stopwatch. We're going to type wiggle 8, comma, you know, 50. And so now particles are being thrown around everywhere. As you can see, because our text layer is just moving around really fast and if you look at the speed checker you can see it's going 600, it's going 1000, it's really going fast. So let's create a slider control to control the amount of wiggle. So remember wiggle the first parameter is how many times per second and the second is how much. So we'll go ahead add a slider control slider control and we'll call this uh, wig and we'll just pick whip Instead of putting a number here, pick whip this slider, which is just going to use whatever this is. And currently it's zero, so it's not going to do anything. And then we turn that on, move forward a couple of frames, so page down, and we'll turn this up. And we'll go forward a few more frames, and we'll turn it down to zero. So we just, uh, it goes on, it goes off. Now we'll set the high point to about 50. So we'll do 50. And that gets it going pretty quick. And then let's go to Particular, and let's make our particles look a little nicer. Go into the Particle Settings, and uh, we'll do the color, and we'll set it over life. And we'll also click down here, open this up. We'll do this green preset here. And in the beginning, just click Add in a Yellow, and space it out and change the transfer mode to, I don't know, screen or add. And then we'll do the life of the particle. Come down here, life, you know, 0.75 seconds. So very short, maybe one. And then we'll also go ahead and do the size over life and do this ramp so that they just get smaller over life. Now, we also need to randomize the particles a little bit. So we'll come down and we're going to set the velocity to 20 and the velocity from motion to about 120. And the velocity from motion basically is going to throw those particles in the direction that it's traveling. So those particles go that way, those particles go that way, it's just kind of this crazy mess. And let's go ahead and lower the life of the particle to 0.8 and so they're not as long. And let's go and give it a little bit more of an organic feel. Go into the physics, come down to air, go down to turbulent field, and we'll affect the position a bit. And we'll turn the scale down just a little bit also. And uh, so now, it just kind of has a more organic feel to it. B. Also, I want to go ahead and turn on the motion blur. So we'll come down to the very bottom motion blur, go ahead and turn it on. So now the particles are sort of blurring out, looking good. Now we want the video copilot layer to fade in 
So we'll hit T, turn it down to zero, and we'll move forward a couple of frames and then turn it up to 100. And that way it looks like it gets created out of thin air from that. And then also, as a small touch in the particular layer, we're going to do Effect Trap Code Star Glow. Now, I usually don't use uh, this plugin, but it's just an extra effect that just makes it look cool. That also can be found at trapcode.com. And we're going to go ahead and use the grassy star preset. And uh, that looks pretty cool. So back to the text layer. We have our wiggle expression. Let's go ahead and turn it on so it comes on. And let's go ahead, set a keyframe, move forward a couple of frames. We'll do like 50 again. And then go forward a few and turn it down to zero. So it turns on. And then it goes out. And so again, we'll set a keyframe for the opacity and then go forward and turn it down to zero. So fade it out. Now I also have a cool texture. I'm going to drag that down, change the transfer mode to overlay, and we can scale it down just a little bit. And we can also give our text a little bit more life. We'll go to Generate Ramp, and we'll go Radial. Set the first color to white, and the second color to, say, this green color. Maybe a little bit lighter. And move this here. And we'll do Effect Perspective Drop Shadow. And we'll feather that out just a bit. Maybe duplicate it. Control D. Now, if we want to make more particles or less particles, um, we go into Particular. And actually, let's go and bring the size of the particle down real quick. So come down. Size to, say, 3. So just small particles. Now, if we want to make more or less particles, we go into the expression. Hit U. And in this expression, right now, it's set to 29 times the speed. So the speed is 600, and it's emitting 17,000 particles. So to increase that, just increase this number, 35. And then there's 20,000 now, 21,000. So it's pretty easy to you know control it once you get in there. And uh, let's go and play this back. Okay, pretty cool, and uh, you know, I bet you didn't know you could do this kind of cool stuff when you're on speed. I mean, when you're using speed. <laughs> wow, that really sounds bad, but uh, you know, the speed is the key, and we can also take it one step further. I may cut this, I may not, depending on how much time we have. Text layer, and hit R, and we can rotate it. So we can, instead of just adding an expression to the position, we can also add the expression down here. So we can right click, copy, alt click, right click, paste. So now we added the expression in here. And so now the text layer is going to also rotate. So if we bring that up, you can see it's rotating. Now in order for our particles to know that, we need to link the rotation of the particle emitter to the rotation of the text. Now that's easy to do. We just go in here. Take the Z emitter rotation, so Z rotation, alt click, and here it is, pick whip down to the Z rotation. So now you can see our emitter is rotated and it's matching the text rotation. And what's great about this is going to give us a lot more randomness when it comes to emitting these particles. Okay, pretty cool, and uh, I want you guys to be thinking about all the other cool things you can do with a speed test expression. So, so you have a garbage truck driving and when it reaches a certain speed you can have a particle generator sending out a bunch of pieces of trash and then it slows down and the trash stops. Um, so that's kind of a cool idea. Um, come on, there's got to be some great ideas out there. Um, you know, I can't be thinking of them all. Good luck with this project and of course be sure to check out videocopilot.net. We got a great blog, lots of useful information, free templates, all that cool stuff. And of course, check out our great products and DVDs, help support the site. Uh, we love doing these tutorials and uh, you know we love to keep doing it. So thanks again. I'm Andrew Kramer for videocopilot.net and we'll see you next time.